Today I'm going to walk you through the AMC sample test, biology, biochemistry section, passage number five, show you how to get all the questions correct, and also teach you some pretty cool sciences along the way. So let's jump straight in with the passage. In the ocean, many animals use organic material dissolved in seawater as a nutrient source. The ability of these organisms to absorb dissolved organic matter, or DOM, such as amino acids, oop, that's a basic science, right, amino acids, across the body wall is believed to play an important role in their survival in low food, nutrient poor conditions. Okay, so so far they're talking about how these animals survive and they do that by absorbing DOM, which has amino acids in it. So from a flow chart, I'm gonna say amino acids are contained in DOM and increased absorption of DOM leads to increased survival, especially in nutrient low conditions. Moreover, survival in a nutrient poor water column is likely enhanced if animals have low rates of utilization of cellular energy reserves. So this is another way we can survive is by actually decreasing how much energy we use. It's like trying to build up a bank account. I can either make more money or I can spend less. We go on to read, recently scientists examined the role of DOM as a source of nutrients for the larva of two different species of starfish. I didn't know that a baby starfish was named a larva, but that's okay. The larva of one species, um, Link, and Zelda were collected in the waters of the warm tropical Pacific, whereas the larva of other species, Odontister, were collected in the extreme cold environment of the Southern Ocean. So it seems like what they're differing, differing here is the temperature of the water that they were actually collected in. It says in the laboratory, intracellular rates of amino acid transport. Okay, now we're talking about transport. That's kind of making my brain go along the lines of kinetics. And the biochemical composition of whole animal tissues were measured. Okay, there really wasn't a whole lot from there. They were just kind of setting up the experimental design for me and telling me what we're about to do. And so hopefully in the next paragraph, they're going to explain to us the sciences behind what they found and what they used to get there. Time course experiments were performed across a range of different L-alanine. Remember, this is important because amino acids have stereochemistry. That's also the stereochemistry that we use as humans. Performed across a range of different L-alanine concentrations to determine the kinetics I told you, the kinetics of amino acid transport in larval link and odontister at the approximate temperature for each species. Okay, so what we're really looking at here is going to be the protein kinetics. It's gonna be very similar to how you learned enzyme kinetics in your MCAT prep or even your undergraduate biochemistry course. So I believe that's gonna be the main science that they're testing here, but let's go ahead and look at this figure. The way that we interpret figures, remember we just read this real quick, which is just saying that here we're looking at these kinetics of the amino acid transport. Um, and then if we look at our X and our Y axes, we'll notice that these are very similar variables that we use for enzyme kinetics. And you'll notice that this has the classic michaelis minton curve. So we are talking about kinetics in the same sense as we are talking about enzyme kinetics with michaelis minton equations. Last paragraph says, the protein and lipid content of whole animal tissues from these larvae were analyzed, and that's shown in figure two, and carbohydrate content was not measured because it comprises only a small fraction of the total organic material found in the tissues of these organisms. The only way that I could really see them questioning this is if they were to ask about a study flaw, and the answer would be along the lines of, we should have included carbohydrates in this study, but it doesn't seem too important yet. Again, we'll look here. This is just telling us that we're looking at the available proteins and lipids, and they tell us that we're looking at these two separate larvae and the percentage of dry organic lipid or weight per protein or lipid. This is an enzyme kinetics passage. It looks a lot different from the way that you learned enzyme kinetics, but that's what they're going to test you on here. So as you're going through these sciences and you're learning them, especially the high yield ones like amino acids or enzyme kinetics or things of that nature, make sure you're thinking of different ways that you could be tested on these subjects because it won't always be in the capacity that you learned it in. As a matter of fact, it probably won't be. So let's take a look at these questions. Number 23 says, which feature of the kinetics of L-alanine transport would provide evidence that DOM is an important source of nutrients under low food condition? If I'm gonna rephrase that, I'm gonna say, which of these metrics shows me that I will still be able to get nutrients from this source even when there's not a lot of it? Going through these answer choices, A says high affinity transport of L-alanine. Well, yeah, if you have high affinity, that means that even if you just have just a little, we're going to take every inch that we get. 
So I like high affinity. B says low affinity transport. No, that means that we're gonna need a ton to actually flood our receptors before we allow that amino acid to get transported through. So maybe not B. C says high transport capacity. This wouldn't really be useful under low food conditions because a transport capacity or a VMAX would only be applicable when you have a ton of substrate. So if you look at this figure, if you don't have a lot of substrate, it doesn't matter how high your VMAX is because these are all starting around the same location. So something like a high affinity or a lower KM would actually be more useful. So say maybe not C, and then D says a low transport capacity. And I don't like D either because lowering the total amount that we can possibly hold doesn't help us retain what we've got either. So maybe not D, that leaves A to be the correct answer. 24 says if the concentration of amino acid transport protein is increased, the transport affinity KT of L-alanine will what? So they're saying if we increase the amount of enzyme that we have, how does that affect our KM? And the correct answer is that KM is an intrinsic factor of the protein, and KM is synonymous to KT in this situation. So that means that our KM or our KT will not change depending on the amount of enzyme that we have. So the correct answer here is going to be C. Number 25 says if we assume that the amino acid transport protein complex examined in figure 1 follows standard michaelis minton kinetics, then KT is equal to what? Okay, so we've already kind of made this assumption. That's how we've gotten the other questions correct. But what they're saying is if we look at figure one, which is here, then what does KT equal to? Now, what you'll notice here is something really tricky, and that's that this passage doesn't mention KT at all. So a lot of students will waste a ton of time going back and reading and rereading this passage, looking for KT over and over but it's not there. Luckily, however, they've already asked us a question of it and kind of explained what it is referring to. And we have the correlation that if it's following standard michaelis minton kinetics, then Km equals one half Vmax. And we've already made that connection between Km and Kt. So we're looking for something that's going to be synonymous with substrate concentration at one half of Vmax. A says Kt will be equal to double the maximal transport capacity. No, that would mean KT is equal to 2 Vmax. So maybe not A. B says the substrate concentration at one half the maximal transport capacity. Yeah, that's perfect because that is substrate concentration at one half of Vmax. That's exactly what KM is. So I like B. C says the transport capacity at one half the substrate concentration. That would say velocity at one half s which is not what we're looking for so maybe not c and then d says the substrate concentration at one third the overall transport rate so that is saying substrate concentration at one third v max which is not what our km is equal to either so we can rule out d and that leaves us with b as the correct answer number 26 says a separate group of scientists repeated the amino acid transport experiments described in the passage all protocols were performed as outlined in the individual study with one major exception, and that's that D-alanine was used as the primary amino acid substrate. What effect will this change have on the synthesis of new proteins in the animal studied? Protein synthesis will what? So I can simplify this question as, how does changing the stereochemistry impact protein synthesis. Now, if you remember all of the enzymes and the proteins and the ribosomes that are involved in synthesizing proteins actually have a preference for a specific stereochemistry. And so if you throw in D-alanine when our body is used to making L-alanine and proteins out of the L stereoisomer, our proteins will not be able to interpret this D-isomer. So D is a no-go. That means when it ran into D-alanine, it would stop. So we're going to completely inhibit protein synthesis because our protein will not be able to use any of the alanine that's available. So the correct answer here would be D. It's inhibited. Answer choice A says it would double. Well, we can see that inhibiting protein production would not double it, so maybe not A. B says that it's not going to change. Well, it's obviously going to change because our enzymes are stereospecific. Now, if they mention that, that this organism's enzymes could handle either stereoisomer, then B would be the correct answer, but they don't say that, so I'll say maybe not B. C says decrease by one half. We don't have anything in the passage that alludes to the fact that Alanine makes up 50% of the protein. That's the only way I could see C as being a reasonable answer. But even if we did have that, 
I'd want to caution you to not pick C because if you have 50% of a protein is made of one amino acid and then you no longer have that amino acid available, you're not going to be able to string that protein together. So you're not going to have half the available protein. You're going to have none of the functional protein. So I'd rule out C and that leaves D as being the correct answer. And this very last one says, which information about the larva of each species when combined with the data presented in figure two would help scientists predict which species of starfish is best suited to withstand periods of long-term nutrient deprivation? So they're wanting us to take the knowledge that we've been given in this passage and kind of extrapolate it onto future hypotheses and things like that. Very sciencey stuff. But the real question is, what else would we need to intuit long-term survival? Data in figure two tells us how much of our mass is made of proteins or lipids, which is basically telling us the available calorie source that we have. So if we know the available calorie source that we have, which of these would be helpful in telling us how long it's going to take us to use that calorie source? So A is ambient water temperature. No. <laughs> The temperature of the water is not going to be able to tell you how quickly you're going to use those calories. So I'd say maybe not A. They did allude to this. This is a cop-out answer choice because they talked about how the larvae were from different temperatures of water. So here they're just trying to get you to bite on that. Even though it doesn't really answer the question, it doesn't make scientific sense. B says the average mass of an individual. I think B is attractive because when we think of one species, the different mass of an individual usually does correlate with their energy expenditure. So I'll say maybe to be, even though I'm kind of against it because we're, we're actually cross comparing species. So it's really not a direct comparison. C says the average metabolic rate. Uh, I like C because C is telling me how many calories do you burn per day? So the data in figure two tells me how many calories you have available. And then C says how many kcals you burn per day. I can use that information to figure out how many days you can survive. So I like C and it's better than answer choice B because the thing about answer choice B that made it attractive was its correlation to answer choice C. So C is obviously a better answer than B. So now I can rule it out. And then D says the duration of daily light exposure. I say maybe not to D. It seems like it's actually kind of hinting towards something like photosynthesis, but here we're dealing with starfish. We're not told that they use photosynthesis at all. And they may, I really don't know too much about starfish, but because there was nothing else in the passage, I'm going to take this answer choice and I'm going to push it over there. It's a Patrick the starfish joke, but it's wrong. So the correct answer here would be C. So this passage was a huge enzyme kinetics passage that was kind of disguising itself as a biology passage. And that's very common on the MCAT. You'll have high yield sciences that hide in the realms of biology or medicine all the time. If you're confused at some of the strategies and how I actually simplified these questions or or looked through these figures and interpreted the relevant information or what the heck I did here, um, here with my notes. Check out our strategies playlist. If you're studying for the MCAT or you know a friend who is, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel because we'll have plenty of instructional videos coming out showing you the best strategies to use for the exam, how to plan for it, how to prepare for it, and give you plenty of examples on working through passages just like this one. Thanks for watching the video and I will see you next time.